Hey, it is Troy Richardson, and this video is going to be about installing MySQL version 5.7 and MySQL Workbench or MySQL Workbench. And so, if you go to the MySQL site, and here's where I recommend going I recommend going to dev.mysql.com, and then once you get there, you can click on downloads or you can go ahead and type downloads. So, I'm going to click on downloads. And then we want the Community Edition. The Community Edition is the open source, the free version that they give away. doesn't cost anything. So I'm going to click on that. All right. And I'm going to click on MySQL Community Server. And then I'm going to scroll down. And you'll notice right here, I want the 8.0 is the latest version. Okay. But they made some drastic differences in version 8. So we're going to stick with 5.7. Um, this is especially true if you're taking my CPT 242 class. This is a version you want, so the book more closely matches what we're doing. And so here it is, server 5.7. And so I'm going to click on it. And then it's going to ask me, hey, which one do you want? And you can literally just click right here on the MySQL installer for Windows. And it will take you to the installer options. I'll scroll down here. All right. And you'll see. There are two versions. There is the 15.8 meg and there's a 354.6 meg. Now, depending on how fast your internet connection is, you may want to download the full version or you may want to download the, the light version. The light version only downloads what it needs as it goes. But if you have a slow connection, it might be worth it to download the large version and wait for the whole thing to download so it doesn't have to keep going back to their website to pull the rest of it down. So I'm going to download the large 354.6 meg file. Okay. Now, you scroll down this page. You see login and sign up. You don't have to do any of that. You're looking for no thanks. Just start my download. And you don't have to sell your digital soul. So anyway, I've already downloaded it before, so that's why it's coming up. It's like, hey, wait, you've already downloaded it. Yep. So I'm gonna cancel here. I've already downloaded it. Um, you guys are welcome to download it. But I'm going to say cancel because I've already downloaded You know what? I'm going to go ahead and say save. So you can see, yes, I actually am downloading it. But being that I already have it, I should be able to go to my downloads. And here's where I downloaded it previously. So I'm going to go click on that and start the install. Okay. So this starts up the MySQL installer. And here it's going to ask me yes or no. I'm going to say yes. And then it's going to bring up the installer where I get to choose options. And here I'm going to say yes to this as well. It's Oracle America. You may not know this, but Oracle bought MySQL several years back and it hasn't been the same since. Um, so, anyway, you can scroll and read this whole thing if you want. Um, it probably says something about giving away your firstborn child if you use the software or I don't know. All right. And then I'm going to choose custom. And the reason I'm choosing custom is that there's just so much here that it can install that you absolutely don't need. So I'm going to install custom and I'll show you which options to choose so that you only install exactly what you need. Nothing else so you don't get confused. There's no fluff. There's not garbage taking up space on your hard drive that you're never going to use. So next. If you ever get deep, deep, deep into MySQL, then you may want to do a full installer or developer just so you can play with some of the options choose next and here I'm going to click on MySQL server and 5.7 and if you have a 64-bit computer I recommend installing 64-bit if you have a 32-bit this is the x86 will be the 32-bit either will work though but I'm going to do the 64-bit because that's my preference so I'm going to click the arrow to put it over in the bucket over there okay and then under applications, I'm looking for MySQL Workbench. So here's MySQL Workbench. So I'm going to click the green arrow and add that over. So I've added MySQL Server and I've added MySQL Workbench. And so now I'm gonna, that's all you need. You don't need anything else. We're going to choose next. All right. It says ready to install. So I'm going to say execute. And off to the races we go. And it's done pretty quick. And if you want to see the details, you can click right here on show details and you see it creating the directories and copying files in their correct locations. So that's going really well. That's good.
All right, so that was successful. It's uh, at that 99% mark installing. All right, now it's completely successful. All right, so now I'm gonna choose next. And it's ready to configure. We're gonna go with the default. Now we're gonna choose next. And then we're gonna choose the defaults here. This is the port number 3306. That comes up later when you're trying to connect MySQL Workbench and ask you what port number. That is the default port. So unless you change it here, you should be fine. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and choose next. I'm gonna leave the defaults and choose next. And then it insists that we create a root password. Now the root password is the king or queen of the database. So that's the account that has all the permissions to do whatever it wants to the database server. Uh, the database software itself and inside the database work you know the workbench so here for this purpose I'm going to use a lame password but you can use any password you want if this were a production environment you absolutely must use a complex password so that is difficult for people to try to hack into um, we're keeping the default port so people you know hackers could try to connect to it on that default port and if they were able to guess your password then they would compromise your database server but this is just for a test or a development environment, so I'm going to use a lame password. The key thing here is write your password down somewhere. Preferably, if you have a password keeper that is encrypted, store your password there. Um, but don't forget this password because then you'll have to hack up MySQL in order to overcome it, and that's not what this class or this video is about. So remember what your password is. Okay, so I've typed in a strong password, it says. It's not really, but it says it is, so therefore we got to go with it. All right, so choose it next, and next, and we're not caring about that, so we're going to go with defaults on that. And here we're saying execute, so this is going to write the configuration file, update the firewall rules, and start the services. So if we're lucky, all that fun stuff will happen like it's supposed to. So far, so good. Whoa! We are good at this station. We got all green check marks. Life is good. Life is good. All right, so I'm going to choose finish now. All right. And here it says configuration complete. I can choose next, but here it's going to start my SQL workbench, and that's great. Uh, we have the big finish button. And I'm going to close out Chrome because we're done with it. All right, so here's my SQL Workbench. So it's already configured a connection for us. So we'll click on that. It should come as a password. And because I'm having some keyboard difficulty, I have to go to my alternate keyboard. Hopefully this won't happen to you. And I'm going to choose, even though this is not wise, but because this is just for a test environment, I'm going to say save password and vault. That way I don't have to log in with the password every time. All right, and there I am. And now we have MySQL installed and MySQL Workbench. Now, if you go and look at this tab right here, um, this shows you, you can go here and see database, that type of thing, connected database, managed connections, that type of thing. I don't really care about that. We're going to go right here. Now, for this class, you need some databases, the class I'm teaching. Um, so we're going to close that out and close that out we'll start from scratch so if you go right here you see open a sql script so i'm gonna open a sql script all right and i have a script um, in the classroom environment you see a script called this that's in our classrooms file it says create databases so i'm going to choose open and while if you're in my cp2242 class then we'll talk this to death and you'll see everything it does but basically drop database if it exists so it goes and says hey if there's a database called AP then get rid of it and then create a database called AP and then it tells it hey use the AP database and then create all the tables and then as the script goes on it actually is going to add the data into the tables so that you have this 
to actually use in the classroom environment if you're in my class. Um, so I'm going to click the lightning bolt here. Now this is a cursor lightning bolt. So you could highlight something and say just run that line right there. So if I did that, let me see at the bottom. This is, database doesn't exist. That just runs that one line of code. But if I hit the lightning bolt, it runs the entire script. And this is a this is structured query language. So I'm hitting the lightning bolt, and it's going to go through the process of creating all my tables. And I'm going to drag this bar up so you can actually uh, see. Try to anyway. Yep. There we go. All right, and it is done. Now you don't see a database over here yet. That's because you got to refresh. So hit this icon right here. It looks like a recycle bin, and hit it again. And so there are tables: the AP database, the EX database, and the OM database. These will be the databases we predominantly use for CPT 242 class. So anyway, that's how you install MySQL and MySQL Workbench. I'm going to close it out so that we start from scratch. You kind of see that process. So I'm closing that down. Hitting the start button. And 17 new programs installed. Oh, that wasn't MySQL. We've been doing some stuff. So here, let's scroll over until we get to the M's. And you'll see MySQL here in a moment. All right. My single workbench. So that's what you want. Double click on that. And there's my single workbench. And then to begin your initial connection, you double click right here on this. If you didn't see it, you could click on this plus sign here and start a new connection and give it a name. Database class. You can call it whatever you want. But you, know, you give it a name. But we already have ours, so I'm going to cancel that. And double click on this. And this should take us right into MySQL. So look, the last thing I had open is still there. And so there you go. That's it. And that's how you install MySQL uh, 5.7. Thanks for watching.